exaltation is the word that being invited this evening or this afternoon as the disciples uh, following Paul and John gather here in the synagogue on the day of the Sabbath and one of the leaders in the synagogue approached the disciples and asked them to, with this statement, my brothers, if one of you has a word of exaltation for the people, please speak. And then, John, and then Paul got up and proclaimed it in this way, fellow children of Israel and you others who are God-fearing, listen. So Paul then continued that beautiful preaching ministry of Jesus Christ. And the term being used in part of the Acts of the Apostles is exaltation. In many ways in line with this week, especially on yesterday, Wednesday, when we honor Teacher National Day of recognition for all of their sacrifices, their creativity, especially during this pandemic. Many of them have to learn how to do Zoom, a different way of bringing concentrations and attention getting for all of our students who are studying at home. So this gift of being able to exalt, to be able to teach, is such a, a great gift that God has given to all of our teachers. And especially too to all of our healthcare professionals, for all our nurses, National Day, that we too recognize in a way during this pandemic, there's a lot of teaching that's involved in, in bringing more clarity to uh, COVID patients as well as to family members who are not able to visit or see their, their, their family members. And, and it's only through doctors and nurses who guide them and, and give them progress update. So it is fitting for us to reflect upon this gift of exaltation in, in the scriptures as well as in our daily life. So what is the meaning of exaltation? Is an utterance, is a discourse conveying certain urgent advice or a recommendation? So these are the different tools that, that an exalter would do or teachers would do or nurse would do during this time. Maybe conveying certain message, conveying certain ways of how to live better, how to be clean, to sanitize ourselves, to keep ourselves healthy in many ways. But in, in part of the scriptures, to teach or to exalt is such a powerful tool, a call to discipleship. And that's what we are called to live our life. That, that's what every preachers, every teachers, every catechist, every priest is invited to do, to engage people to live in discipleship with Jesus Christ. And that, that is the goal of every teacher in many ways. That's our mission, and that's my mission when I come to proclaim the Word of God and to share the Word of God with you. And so part of this discipleship then is to engaging us in relationship between God and us and between us with each other and among other Christians and non-believers as well. And, and that movement is such an important movement for all of us. So we are called then to encourage one another, to use that word of encouragement in every aspect of our faith journey, not to lose hope, not to lose faith, but to find hope in the midst of this pandemic. And so as we come to exalt then, we come to see then this whole idea, how do I stimulate people to engage in the faith? How do I stimulate children to learn what they needed to learn, even if they don't want to learn? And that, that is the call of creativity, as I share with you this past Sunday. And so this, this, this journey of us being, being that catechist, being that teacher, being that nurse, in the different vocation that we have embarked upon in our lives. But then ultimately, just as we listen to the Gospel of John in chapter 13, every catechist, every teacher, every nurse, what is the one message you want to leave behind? What is it that you want to walk away or take away from that exaltation, from that recommendation, from that urging of, of clarification maybe in our life during this time? 
It's exactly what we heard in Paul giving that great summation about from the Old Testament to the New Testament and even to the day of Jesus' baptism. So he reframed the whole plans of salvation and he reframed the teachings of John the Baptist as it proclaimed this way. What do you suppose that I am? And John said, I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. And Paul too, in many ways, exalting that whole journey, he is not worthy. And yet he is being chosen to call by the Lord to continue that message of Jesus Christ, to follow in that footstep. And so now in the Gospel of John, as it proclaimed here, after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, so this Gospel being taking place at the, at the farewell dinner that Jesus is giving and celebrating with the disciples and giving him his final teaching, his final exaltations. And so this is his final message here to the disciples. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever receives the one I send receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. And that is such a powerful message here. It says, proclaim, whoever receives the one I send receives me. So, 21st century, so who are the people that Jesus is sending? besides priests, besides religious sisters and brothers. If it's not the catechists, if it's not the teachers, if it's not the nurses, and every profession that right now are, are carry that catechetical uh, means, that, that vocation to teach others. And so we invite you then to imitate in this message of Jesus Christ. Receive them with great openness as they have been chosen being called by God and doing so, as Jesus proclaimed me, whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. So there is that beautiful cycle. Receive the disciples of Jesus Christ. And when we're doing so, we receive Jesus. And when we receive Jesus, we receive God into our life journey of faith. So let's go this day. Let's learn how the best ways to encourage one another, to teach, to admonish, to clarify, to communicate. And that is all the role of being and learning how to be an effective exalters or providing that great exaltation of Jesus Christ.